Hi everyone. Today I would like to introduce you to Systronix cash flow forecasting. We all forecast our cash flow, however, currently most of us use Excel for forecasting. The benefit of using cash flow forecasting is that it reads the data already available in Sage 300 ERP. It forecasts the cash flow not only using the data from a country receivable and payable modules, but also sale orders, purchase orders, new business forecasts, recurring transactions, and atom transactions that affect the cash flow forecast for each bank. I would like to show you how you would forecast the balance for PR Bank for July 31st, 2020 using cash flow forecasting. Uh, let's assume that currently we are in May 2020. The central point of cash flow forecasting module is the management console. I select the bank here, PR Bank, and the date for which I want to do the forecast. Uh, I can see the current balance of the bank. Current balance is the actual balance of the bank as per Sage 300 ERP. First, I want to see how much money I would be receiving until 31st of July from my operations. I can use for this purpose AR invoices and I can select here the transaction date. Transaction date is the date on which I expect to receive money from the particular document. And I can select to include only the documents which are going to be due on in July. So I'll just select here the document date is in July. And I'll generate the list. Now, once the list is populated, I can fine-tune it. I can, for example, exclude several transactions uh, from my forecast, or I can modify the date and the amount to be included in the forecast. So I'm done here. Let's see what is my inflow based on AR documents in July. What you see in this list are transaction, provisional transactions. Why provisional? Because these transactions are only in cash flow forecasting module and they have not affected any other Sage 300 ERP module. Uh, what does this mean? For example, this transaction is a provisional receipt telling me that I expect that Mr. Ronald Black will be paying me $3,469 in July 15. So it's a forecasted future transaction based on the actual invoice in account receivable module. Uh, and I can see that the total inflow based on AR documents in July is 21,144. And the closing balance, only taking into account this information, is $18,563. Uh, same way, I can include sale orders in my forecast. Uh, I can choose uh, to generate based on order entry and again I have I can choose the transaction date once more transaction date is the date on which I expect to receive the money now for order entries we have the following options it can be the order date it can be order date plus average days to pay order date plus terms expected ship date as defined in order entry uh, expected ship date plus average days to pay, expected ship date plus term, and a specific date. I would like to mention that we currently support single payment schedule terms and with the days from the invoice date or uh, end of next month types. Okay, let's see. For July forecast, I will select expected ship day plus average days. I will also select to include only the transactions for which I expect to receive money in July. OK, 
Okay. There are two such documents. I can preview uh, this information on a report to verify that everything is correct. Okay, I can see that everything is fine and I can generate provisional transactions for orders as well. Okay, now I have my total inflow based on the AR and OE transactions. Uh, you can see here the source here is telling it's an AR transaction or OE transaction. In my case, when I started, I also had a transaction from cash, uh, KF module as well. Uh, but I also have to pay some money. Now let's see how much I should pay in July. I'll create provisional payments based on AP and PO transactions. And these are very similar to the ones we created for AR and OE. So let's create what is due to be paid in July. Let's see. I'm not going to make any changes and I'll generate all as is. There are six transactions generated. And let's see for OE. Uh, for purchase orders. I'll select again arrival date plus average days to pay and I'll select only the POs which I will for which I will need to pay money in July. There are three such purchase orders. Let me generate. Now you can see that my forecasted, um, my current balance is 2000 minus 2581. Uh, my inflow based on transactions from operations is already available in NACBAC is uh, 2000 to 25,466. Outflow is 14,000. And closing balance, forecasted balance is 9,244. Uh, let's fine-tune this furthermore. For example, I have talked to my sales department and my sales department has mentioned that um, Ronald, Mr. Ronald Black has called them and he has said that he's not, he will not be able to pay for this invoice in July 15 as the invoice uh, due date and he has asked them to extend the uh, grace period till September. My sales team has agreed. So I have to exclude this document from my July forecast. All I have to do for that is just come here and change the date to the new expected date. This is July. So when I change it, my forecast has been now, uh, has excluded this transaction and this transaction has been excluded from my forecast. And the closing balance as as of 31st July has become 5,774. I can also change the bank. For example, I have decided that I want to deposit this uh, money received not to the PR bank but to CCB. I'll just open the provisional transaction. I will modify it and change the bank to the new bank. I, the, as you can see, the amount the transaction is also excluded from my forecast, but this one will be included in the forecast of CCB automatically. I can also change the amount. For example, I know that the uh, Bergen Mart San Diego will be paying only 300, so I'll change it to 300. Our sales team 
has informed me that there is a possible new job and this new job will generate for us 10,000 cash on 28th of July and we will have to pay 8,500 for it on 27th of July. So I will create a new business. I will say that on 28th of July I am expecting to get from 1,400 customer 10,000 cash and on 27th of July, I expect to pay vendor 1,400 at 1,500 cash. I'll generate the provisional transactions. And when I refresh the screen, you can see that now my cash flow forecast says that the closing balance of PR Bank will be 6,332. The net inflow of this new business is also included in my forecast. Uh, there are some ad hoc transactions that I want to enter for future expenses, which I'm anticipating. For example, I know that I need to pay uh, trade lights for trade license renew renewal. So I'll just create a new provisional transaction entry manually. I'll make this as a miscellaneous entry. I'll pay for on July. Let's say it's 31st of July. I will be paying for trade license renewal and I'll select my GL account and enter the amount for trade license renewal I will be paying $2,000 I'll create this transaction and now you can see that it has affected my forecasted balance, making it from 6,000 to 4,000. And finally, uh, we have some recurring transactions predefined in my company, such as list payments, interest to be received, utility bills, etc. Now I want to generate transaction for this. I will be generating transactions for, uh, uh, for interest payments. So I have this loan and it's $10 is the interest and $150 is the principal. I'll create provisional transactions up to July 31st because the schedule is weekly and I'm generating for one month. It has created four transactions. And when I refresh my forecast, I will see these transactions created in the system loan repayment transactions. Now I have my final forecast for PR Bank for July. I can I have here all the information required and as of now I can forecast that in July 31st my cash in PR Bank will be $3,692. Once more, what we have here is the bank, the date on which I'm doing the forecast, the overdraft balance of the ba over allowed by the bank, current balance, which is the actual balance of the bank, all the transactions with their running total effect of the bank balance and the closing balance of the bank. Uh, also, if at some point the bank balance goes below the overdraft limit, it is colored and you can easily identify that that transaction is making your bank balance go below the overdraft limit. This is the basic functionality for cash flow forecasting, but I want to show you two features as well, which will um, help you to benefit from cash flow forecasting module. First is alerts. So we were talking, all we were talking here is future, future cash flow, future transactions, transactions with future day. Provisional transaction alerts shows you the transactions which are not future anymore, but they are still in cash flow forecasting. So something has to be done with them. For example, I have a transaction dated April 2019. It's like one year ago, this transaction had to be 
uh, either made actuals or we done something to it, but it's still sitting in my provisional transaction alert. What can I do for that? Okay, for this one, I know that this transaction, they have, uh, we have some issues with this customer and we didn't deliver the goods yet. So this I will change to um, September 2020. And I have only one transaction remaining. Uh, and with this transaction, I know that we have already, um, they have uh, given us an advance payment. And I'll make the advance payment. I'll just open the transaction. And I can create an actual transaction based on my provisional transaction. So this one is, has been an advance payment. I'll just pr generate a prepayment. Pre As you can see, it opens the... AR receipt entry screen. I can update and modify it as required if required and I can add the transaction here. When I add this transaction, the provisional transaction will be considered as completed and it will not be included in the forecast anymore. But obviously the amount of these transactions will become will affect my bank and it will uh, update the current balance of the bank. Uh, this is all I plan to show you for cash flow forecasting today. Uh, thank you for attending the webinar.